going on everyone it's jamie here from shopify masterclass and today we'll be looking at a product page tutorial to give you an overview of what the product page is how you can be adding new products what you should be looking at and things that you might have missed so make sure you stay to the end of the video here and as I go along the content, if you're enjoying anything along the way, I would love it so much if you hit that like and subscribe button below, as that really helps the channel out, especially as we're on the road to 3,000 subscribers now. Before I dive into it, I want to mention our sponsor, ProfitCalc, the one-click profit calculator app available on the Shopify app store. It comes with a 15-day free trial and allows you to skip the spreadsheets and get back to growing your store with real-time calculations. And there's a link in the description below to access that trial there. Also, I'm going to show a quick video detailing their full feature set. Are you a Shopify business owner who spends hours doing your accounting? Have messy spreadsheets kept you from growing your business? Discover ProfitCalc, the affordable and easy to set up Shopify app that crunches your numbers in just one click. It automatically syncs with all your accounts and expenses to calculate your profit, displaying everything in an easy to read dashboard so you understand your business in real time. Start for free on the Shopify App Store today. Let's dive into the product page now. So this is the back end of a test store. So to get to your product section, you want to simply click on products in the left hand sidebar. And from here, you'll see an overall list of your products. You can filter by products, searching for what you're looking for. You can filter by product vendor, what it's tagged with, the status. And there are many additional filters as well. So you can find the exact product you're looking for. You can also export them or input new products from a CSV file. There's also an overall view to view by all, active, <coughs> draft, and archive. Let's start by adding a new product and we'll go through everything step by step. So when you first create a product, you're going to see everything separated into cards. You have your main card section here, as well as the as well as some overall settings on the right here. So let's start with the middle section and you have your title and then your description. So both are pretty self-explanatory. So with the title, let's call this a short sleeve t-shirt. And with your description, you can add quite a few details details, changing things such as the styling for the heading, you can add bolds, italic, underline, as well as different images and videos. So the media section are going to be your product images. You can also add videos or 3D models. So it's going to show what your product is like. And these are really important to have high quality ones there. Next, we'll move into pricing. You can have your price. So this is the actual amount your product is going to sell for. Let's say this sells for $19.99. And the compare at price is going to be the original price and the price is going to be the sale here. So let's say the compare at price is 39 and the price is 19.99. This is going to show around a 50% discount. If you want to leave this at its full price, you can just remove the care pair at price there. You can also select whether to charge tax on your product. And this is going to be determined by your tax setting set up in the bottom left under settings and taxes. So your cost per item, so your customers aren't going to see this. This is going to be the cost of goods sold. Let's say this cost me $5 and I sell it for $19.99. This gives me a 75% margin with a $14.99 per profit. This item is relevant for different Shopify reports. Different analytics apps will also sync in this cost per item. In if you're drop shipping as well, it might sync those in as well just to have those costs available. So next is going to be the inventory section. So if you're using Shopify to track your inventory, here's where you put your SKU, so your stock keeping unit number and its barcode. You can also allow Shopify to track quantity, so to track your inventory levels. Then you can select whether to sell it when it's out of stock. And this one alert the customer that the item is out of stock. Next, under quantity, you can set which locations which have the items available. So you can have your address on the left, which I have blurred out here as well as how many are available. Next will be the shipping information. You can either toggle that on or off, but here you can set things such as the weight as well as the customs information. This is going to tie into your shipping information overall and what rate to charge for certain products. Shopify has rules. So you could say if an item is over 10 kg, 10 pounds, charge a shipping rate to this country. If it's under that, maybe charge free shipping. And for your customs information, you can select the country as well as the harmonized system code. And customs authorities use this information to calculate duties when shipping internationally on unprinted custom forms. Next is going to be options. So it's going to be the size and color. So you can have different options here. So you can maybe change it by size, color. You could say the color is going to be black. It could be yellow, maybe white are the options as well. Once you fill these out here, this leads you to more detail option of the variants. So you can set different prices and different stock levels as well. And if you click into edit, you can essentially see the same items such as the SKU, the barcode, as well as the customs information. You can set this by a variant by variant basis. Lastly, you can have your search engine listing. So this is what can be shown in Google's results or any search engine results. So you can customize that to give a more detailed description. It will automatically pull from your title and description. But if you want to customize exactly what it looks like, you could basically do so if you have some very popular products showing up in organic search. You can maybe give a more relevant meta description. You can also edit the URL handle if you desire to do that as well. So next we move on to the right hand side. You have your product status that it's active or draft. So if it's active, customers can see it and they can purchase it. If it's in the draft state, they can't do that. You can also select which sales channels to have this on. 
Maybe you have a few different sales channels and you only want it to be available on your online store, but not your Amazon integration. There's also the ability to schedule when the product is gonna be available so when customers can purchase it. So maybe instead of October the 12th, I can set it to October the 19th and this app will appear active then. Sorry, this product will appear active then. Next is gonna be the product organization. So this is gonna help create categories for your store. So you can set the product category here. It's gonna give you some suggested ones. We're gonna leave that as clothing. It's gonna suggest t-shirt as well, which is exactly what that is. You also get the vendor. So you can go into detail classifying which vendor produces which items. And this can lead into more detailed reporting based on that. You can also add it to different collections. So you might have an apparel store here. So there could be t-shirts, pants, shoes, socks, hats. I might list this under a t-shirt collection. And maybe I want this to be featured on the homepage collection so I can enter that one in there. So tags are extra things you can create to provide further detailed categorization for your products. There used to be a theory that adding different tags to your products could lead to higher search results for those products. It's kind of up for debate whether that really works. I've heard it might be good for Google Shopping as it allows Google's AI there to help categorize your products. So you can enter those in there. It could be just descriptive factors such as black t-shirt, men's t-shirt, something along those lines. The last is gonna be the online theme template. With this store, there's only the default product template. So I'm just gonna leave that as is. And once you're done, you just hit save in the top right. And I've set this to active. So this should be live on my testing store here. And once a product is live, you get a little more options here on what to add on the top. So you can preview the product. You can create a link to share on Twitter, Reddit, Interest LinkedIn. There's more actions such as create a shop code. So you can create a QR code link to share with people. You can duplicate your product if you want to do so as well. So I'm going to hit preview here to see what this list is going to look like. It's going to be pretty basic. We can see short sleeve t-shirt. You can have your variant options. It's sold out as I listed zero as a quantity and there is no image. So overall, not what your product should be looking like. But in a nutshell, that is how the product page works for Shopify. If you have any questions about anything, just leave a comment below as well. And so this is where the video is going to conclude here. I wanna thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed any of this content in any of these tutorials, I would love it so much if you hit that like and subscribe button below as that really helps the channel out. Lastly, I wanna mention our sponsor ProfitCalc again, the one-click profit calculator app available on the Shopify app store. It comes with a 15-day free trial and there's a link in the description below to access that there. Thank you so much for watching again, and I'll see you in our next video.